Hello and welcome to Fisher Football Focus. I'm your host, James Bailey. The Cardinals were on a three-game win streak coming into Saturday and were fresh off a 56-0 romp over Alfred State. Fisher headed to Ithaca to try to avenge an Empire 8 loss from last season and keep their hopes of a conference title alive. Let's check in on how they did. The Cardinals set the tone early. Ithaca quarterback Wolfgang Schaefer would get intercepted by Cardinals Brandon Fuentes. Fuentes would take it 44 yards to the house for a pick six, 7-0 Cardinals early. Later in the quarter, Schaefer would get intercepted again by, guess who? Alec Mortallaro, his sixth of the season. Mortallaro would bring it back inside Fisher territory. The Cardinals drive would stall, but Taylor Byrne would kick a 32-yard field goal as time expired in the first to give the Cardinals a 10-0 lead. Early in the second, Fisher keeps it rolling. Matt Nathan the Nathan Nagolian, a 40-yard touchdown. Their sixth touchdown hookup this season. 17-0 Cardinals. Then on Ithaca's next possession, whoop! The ball goes over Wolfgang Schaefer's head. Tristan Brown would fall on it in the end zone for the Bombers, but it ended up being a Cardinal safety. Two minutes later, Nathan connects with his other deep threat, Bobby Campisi, for another score. A burned field goal at the end of the half would give the Cardinals a 28-0 halftime lead. The Bombers received the ball to start the second half, and Schaefer's struggles would continue. Senior captain Brandon Miller would make a great play on the ball here, getting his first career interception. Schaefer would get into it in the play and be out for the rest of the game. That pick would lead to another Cardinals touchdown drive. This one capped off by a 6 yard James Chambers touchdown run. 34-0 Cardinals. Ithaca would still try to put points on the board. John D'Anfrio in at quarterback now, tosses the ball to the end zone, but Fuentes would have none of it, picking off the ball and giving the Cardinals back possession. Now in the fourth, the Bombers driving with one last shot at points. D'Anfrio's pass, picked by Brandon Miller, his second of the day, very reminiscent of the first. His long return would set up the Cardinals in great field position. Unfortunately, they would not score, and the final score would end up 34-0. Miller and Fuentes each ended up with two interceptions. Fuentes' performance was good enough to be named to the Division III National Team of the Week. The Cardinals improved to 5-3 on the season and 4-2 in the Empire 8. After the break, I'll get Coach Fosberg's reaction, so stay right here. Welcome back to Fish Football Focus, joined by, of course, Coach Vosberg. And so, Coach, consecutive shutouts, um, and this one, obviously, a little bit bigger. I mean, you, you expect to maybe shut out a team like Alfred State that's, that's kind of new to the Division Three level, but to go out against an Ithaca team that you've lost to the past two years and go out and shut them out, um, how, do you, how, much do you, how proud of you of your guys' execution to really go out there and, and really hand it to Ithaca? Our, our defense uh, did a great job. I think Coach Fox and his staff did a great job preparing them for Ithaca. Uh, and then our players went out and uh, really executed the game plan as, as they wanted them to. So they, they played a hard, uh, very good football game out there for us. And, and to shut anybody out is, is a tough thing, and especially to go to Ithaca's house and, and shut them out. That's the first time that they've ever been shut out on their, on their home turf. So that's a great job by those kids. Yeah, and you know, really head up by that defense. Five interceptions. Um, they forced a safety. Um, really led off by Brandon Fuentes' uh, pick six on their first defensive possession. Uh, and we we talked a little bit last week about how Schaefer had been struggling a little bit as of late. And it, you guys really, um, you know, really laid it to him. So do you really think that that pick six early on was really kind of like a tone setter that kind of crushed his confidence moving forward and kind of helped lead to the success later in the game? No doubt. I, I think when you open up a game and you're first of all you're on a two game losing streak to start with and that's what Ithaca was on at that time and for him to come out the first play and uh, throw an interception to, to us for a touchdown that that probably hurt him quite a bit so and I think they had a hard time coming back from that. Yeah and then um, to start the second half um, Ithaca gets the ball to start the second half already down 28 nothing, and then um, to have Brandon Miller get an interception on that first possession do you really think that, that was kind of the nail in the coffin that really helped seal the deal for you guys? 
Yeah, I think any time you're ahead at halftime and you come out in the second half and, and something good happens for your football team at that point, it starts to lay the momentum for the rest of the game. And, that, and of course, we were up at 28 to nothing at that time, and I think that just kind of paved the way for us to, to continue to uh, take control of that football game. All right. Um, so Brandon Miller and Alec Morillaro were two, two of the players that got interceptions, but um, Brandon uh, Fuentes, as we meant, just mentioned, had that pick six, had two interceptions, and... Um, Player we haven't really talked about because of his defensive skill. He really plays all around the field, though. Fuentes uh, plays at corner, but he's also your punter. Had that big, big punt in the Courage Bowl, of course. Um, we've seen him a little bit in the slot on offense. Also returns kicks. Really plays all over the field. Do um, you feel like it really helps out your team to have so, a player that's that versatile, able to kind of go out and play just about anywhere on the field? Well, Brandon's an excellent athlete, and so he can do a lot of different things, and he brings a lot to the table for us uh, on defense, on special teams, and he can go over and play on the offensive side. Um, we're pretty fortunate to have a kid of uh, his athletic ability, and he does a great job for us. So this Ithaca game, as you mentioned, lost last two. Uh, big, the big crushing loss was, was last year as you guys were looking to help lock up the Empire A after Tyler Fenty's injury. Um, do you think that this is a big statement win moving forward, saying that you, know, like you have improved over last year and that, that you're in a really good spot right now? Well, I, I think we've gotten better during it. During the season, no doubt. I think uh, our defense has uh, matured and, and grown a lot since the beginning of the season. I think our offense has too, and I think our special teams have. So I think as a whole football team, we're, we're just getting better as the season progresses, and that's what it's about, getting better day by day. And, you know, it's not always how you start. It's how you finish the season that counts. So, And we got some part of the season still to go, so we need to continue to stay focused on uh, what we're doing and get better this week for uh, get ready for a good Hartwick football team. Yeah, and your, your, your offense, you mentioned, doing, doing a good job, rolling pretty well right now. Matt Dayton had another good game, keeping up his streak of, of good games over this uh, four-game win streak. Um, we also saw a little bit different this week, um, uh, a set where you, you lined up. Not only, we've seen a lot of sets with, with both Fusco and Chambers in the backfield. You had a, actually had a set where you had Fusco, Chambers, and Steven Stramol or Alvin Mold in the backfield, really kind of having four rushing threats in the backfield. Um, when you have all those guys in the backfield, do you think it really just puts so much pressure on the defense that they don't know which one of those four guys is going to get the ball? Well, it's a definitely a different look for them because there is a three-back uh, running set there, and, and then they, they got to defend it a little different. They're not sure who's going to get the football in that, and all three of them are capable, whatever three's in there, are capable of running the football. So it does put some pressure on them, no doubt. And then, uh, as we mentioned, Nathan, um, he's really been pretty versatile all year. Um, I know the Ithaca broadcast was talking – Talking about, he's a very he's not only is a great passer, but a tough quarterback to bring down when he does get in, into the uh, open field. Um, do you find that that having that sort of quarterback definitely is helps out the offense more? Would you re or um, would you rather see a pocket passer? Well, I, I think he is really a pocket passer, but you like to have that pocket passer that when the opportunity comes for him to be able to run, uh, he can get it done. Now he's not a, a quarterback that's going to break a 60-yard run on you. But if he can get five or six and get out of the pocket and make a first down or uh, on our zone read, he can make the zone read and turn it upfield and keep the defense honest with his legs. That puts a lot of pressure on the defense because now they got to account for him on every play, not just throwing the football, but now they got to account for him running the football. All right. Um, so Cortland lost this past week to Morrisville. Um, now puts you guys in a share of the E8 lead with uh, Cortland and Alfred. Um, you could win if you went out and Cortland were to lose uh, the Cortica game. Uh, you guys would have the complete um, outright title in the Empire Eight. So um, having played both Cort Cortland and Ithaca, um, do you do you think that that's a, a likely occurrence? Do you think that Ithaca, that Ithaca team that did not look great this past Saturday, can go out and win that Cortland game? Well, you never know, and that that's a big rivalry game. Uh, last year. Going into that game, Ithaca had beaten us the week before and had secured the Empire A championship and a postseason berth. And uh, they went in against a Cortland team that was four and five, and Cortland won. And uh, last year it looked like, you know, Ithaca should win this game and so on and so forth. That didn't happen. So you never know what's going to happen in a rivalry game. And it's college football. This is college football, and it's good college football. Every team's pretty good, especially in the Empire 8. So you can't uh, count uh, Ithaca out. It's at Ithaca this year, uh, I believe, and uh, it's anybody's game, I think, at that corner curve jug. Yeah, and it, um, should, should that happen, you guys do win the Empire 8 all-out. Um, you'd be the all-out champions with, with two losses. 
Um, is that something that's occurred to this team before or even in the Empire 8 in recent years? It happened last year. We were tied for the title. Both of us, both us and Ithaca were 6-2 and two in the conference. So it has happened before. It's so crazy. It could happen again. Very competitive conference. And uh, you have mentioned, yeah, Harvard coming up this upcoming weekend. Just notched their first Empire weight, eight win over Buff, Buffalo State. But as we were talking a little bit before the show, uh, may only be one and five in the Empire eight, but a better team than that. So does that is that like kind of like the the startlight example of of how tough this conference is? That this Hartwick team is is one and five in the conference, and they've looked really great every game. Oh, they're a very good football team. Uh, they took Cortland overtime. Uh, uh, they were ahead of Ithaca at one time. Uh, they had Morrisville on the ropes. In fact, if, if they kick a field goal at the end of the game with six minutes to go, they tie that game. Who knows what happens if that goes into overtime. And then they beat a very good Buffalo State football team. So they've been in every game that they've played this year. Um, they're 2-0 and out of conference. Uh, they beat a good Western Connecticut State in the beginning of the year. Hartwick is a very good football team. Everybody in the Empire 8 is a pretty good football team. Yeah, and they're, they're, they rely pretty heavily on their, their quarterback, John Garcia. And um, you have, did see a very good quarterback a couple weeks ago in Teddy Van Galen at Utica. Um, do you think that you're, especially coming off of such a dominant defensive performance, do you think you can keep rolling? And, um, you know, a shutout might be difficult against the Hartwick team, but kind of keep up that defensive dominance heading into this game? Well, we hope so, you know, and uh, he's a very good quarterback, but he's got a couple of really good receivers to throw the ball to down the field. So <clears throat> we're, we're going to have our hands full with them, and uh, hopefully we can keep our defense off the field by maintaining uh, uh, the football and, and run the football and uh, move the clock a little bit and uh, help the defense out and, and play some good special teams and get good field position. All right. Well, thank you very much, Coach. Best of luck to you this upcoming weekend. Thank you. Up next, we have defensive lineman Aaron Jones and wide receiver Bobby Campisi coming in, so don't move. E3. Nice, Dad. Nice, Dad. Nice, Dad. Charles! Nice, Dad. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of siblings in foster care who'll take you just as you are. Welcome back to Fish Football Focus, joined now by defensive lineman Aaron Jones and wide receiver Bobby Campisi, and welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. So first question going to Aaron. Um, five interception game this past week. Um, after a game like that, I'm um, sure the defense has a lot of momentum built up. Do you guys feel like, do you feel that way, that you guys have a lot of momentum and confidence, especially going into a game against a 3-5 and five Hartwick team? Yeah, I mean, I def we definitely had the momentum going the right way. And coming off 5 3 numbers, a lot to build off of. So looking forward to a good week of practice leading up to Ithaca. And, Bobby, um, really a balanced offensive attack, attack this, up this past week. And you've really been, especially on this four-game win streak, really been pretty, pretty balanced overall. Right. So um, do you think that your depth is really starting to come into play where you got – three backs that can carry the ball. You've got uh, an assortment of receivers that can go out there. You'd For sure. Yeah, we have a lot of weapons offensively. Like, we got, we got three running backs that have been playing great lately, and we got, like, four wideouts that have been playing awesome. It makes it easier on the quarterback. Quarterback can throw it to whoever he wants. He knows that that player is going to make a play. So it just put, takes a lot of stress off of everybody skill-wise just because we know that someone's going to make a play for us. So both you guys, um, you guys are on a four-game win streak right now. Um, coming off kind of a, a slow start, um, do you think that anything in particular has kind of been the spark that led to this streak? I mean, I think we're I think we're finally starting to find our identity yeah, as a team, sure. and once you figure that out, things become a lot easier, and you start to play a lot more comfortable and a lot more relaxed. Right, and like our defense has been playing well lately, so like that helps that takes the stress off the offense when we know our defense is going to make plays for us, and then our offensive line has been playing great, yep. which is making it easier for the skilled guys to move the ball down the field. So it's been nice. Yeah, and no, Aaron, on this four-game win streak, you've held each of your opponents to under 100 yards rushing, uh, typically much less, actually. So what do you think that really says about this defense, that you're really just dominating on, in that facet of the, the defense? I, mean, I think it says that, you know, we're going to line up against you, and we want you to run the football. We want to be physical. We want to play football, you know what I mean? And, and you know, you're, you're not really just one-dimensional either, as we mentioned. No. Force all those, all those turnovers. So um, do, do, you, do you like that as a defensive li lineman, that – that you're stopping the run, would you rather just go out there and just know you have to rush the passer and force some pressure on him? Well, anytime you can get turnovers like our defensive back's been doing, it's great. It's a great relief to get off the field like that. So it, it kind of we kind of play off each other, you know. Like we help them out and they help us out. We lift each other up. 
So, um, Bobby, um, Matt Nathan's been really kind of rolling since he returned in that Morrisville game. Um, so, obviously, you've been, been out there with him all season. Um, have you noticed anything different in the way that he's approached anything, in the way he's been, been doing stuff since his first stint as starter and now these past four games? He's definitely a lot more comfortable out there. Like I said, like the line's been playing great. He's got a lot of time back there, so he can sit in the pocket and read the defense and see who's, who's open. So he just can throw the ball wherever he sees an open spot. So he's been playing well. He's more comfortable, which is nice. Yeah, and um, you know, especially you mentioned having all those receiving threats. Uh, you have yourself, and you also have have uh, Captain Nathan Nagolian. Um, do you think that you, they, that that combo is great having you on one side and then having having a guy like Nagolian who's just really played great all every I th year? He's I think it's great because Nathan's a playmaker. So like if we ever need to make a play, we know that he'll catch the ball, and then we also like have me on the other side. So it takes like stress off of each other. Like I know he'll make a play when we need him to. He knows that I can make a play when he needs me to. So it's just nice to have that out there. And mention some leadership, uh, Aaron. Uh, asked a lot, of, talks a lot about leadership on this show and the defensive leadership you guys have, especially with your your captains, Jordan Andrew, Drews with Brandon Miller and stuff like that, um, coming in the middle. Do you think that kind of plays a big role in the, fa the way that this defense has really been playing lately, having those guys in the front seven? Yeah, definitely having them being on the defensive side, and they're both great leaders, and it's definitely helps us out a lot, having knowing that we have them with us. Uh, to, you know, having shutting out a team. Um, you know, offense. You can go look out and it's, you know look at the Alfred game, fifty six points, and you know that the offense is is dominating. But you know, it's harder harder to find a metric on the defensive side that really plays out, st stands out quite as much. So you think that a shutout's really kind of the ultimate thing that shows that the defense is just going out there doing its job? Yeah, absolutely. I think anytime a defense can get a shutout, that's a great game. You know. So um, you know. We'll go to, to Aaron again here. Um, Harwick's a team that you have Harwick up ne next. Um, they're a team that really kind of struggles to move the ball on the ground. Just mentioned that your defense has been doing a great job stopping their runs. Do you think that complements complements pretty well and that you can be able to maintain this streak of, of holding teams to almost no rushing yards? Yeah, definitely. I'm, I know they like to pass the ball a lot, so we'll be preparing for that. And I know our defense, can we can get the job done on the running side. And are you ready to go out there? Like, is there anything that Coach Fox doing, doing specifically that you can go out there? You mentioned the past, but on the D-line, is there anything specifically that's going on that you think you're going to be able to get definitely get to the quarterback this week? I mean, we're definitely going to look at the film and start reviewing, and we're going, we're going to try to get after the quarterback as much as we can. All right, and, and Bobby, conversely, Hartwick gives up over 200 yards rushing, which isn't your spot of expertise. But first, we'll talk about um, – you, you have been known to, known to get a ball on reverse sometimes. You have three rushes this year. Um, do you like that the, the, um, you know, the coaches are kind of using, different, using you in different ways, not just tossing you down the field, but kind of changing it up, keeping the defense on your toes, handing the ball off to you sometimes? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's good to get every, a carry every once in a while. <laughs> I don't mind that. I mean, whatever can help us win the game. If we, we have to have 500 yards rushing and I get no yards receiving, that'll be completely fine with me as long as we get the W, and that's all that matters. Yeah, and um, you know, you, you we mentioned that you have all all three running backs playing pretty well in the backfield. Um, do you, you know if the ball gets starts running the ball every single play? Does it get does it get at all frustrating as a receiver to that you know you're not getting a chance to do anything? Are you just going out there and, and blocking, doing all you can do? Like I said, like as long as I'm out there and then we're moving the ball down the field, rushing the ball, then I'll just do my job. If it's blocking, then I'll block. And if we get to we get the ball in the end zone, then I'm happy with that. All right. So two games left this year. Um, you guys have a chance to potentially go out there and win the Empire Eight all, uh, full, all out, um, especially if if uh, Cor Cortland is to lose to Ithaca in two weeks. Um, do you guys like the fact that you know knowing that you guys started started off with two Empire Eight losses early on, that you guys are still in the hunt at this point? Did you guys ever kind of expect that coming in to um, this four game streak you're on right now? Yeah, well, we know we know what the Empire Eight's like. Like, you know, anyone can win the Empire Eight, so we've expected that. We knew like anything could happen, so we just stayed confident. We've been we just controlling our own destiny. Like, if we can, we know that we can win games, so we just kept trying, and we everything's been working out pretty well for us lately. So, yep. we just know that we gotta we gotta do our part of the deal, and we gotta win our games first, and then hopefully things just fall in place like they have been lately, and hopefully it all works out. Yeah, and, um, I asked Coach. Which Fosbring is? Um, you guys have played against Cortland, played against Ithaca. Um, you're looking really at me having to root for Ithaca in that game. Um, do you think that that Ithaca team can go out there and and beat Cortland in such a big game like that? I think so. I think in that game, especially with it being such a big game with Cortica, I think anybody can go out there and win that game. 
thing go to either way. I agree. I think like in the quarter could drag. Anything can happen. Anyone can win that game. Last year, Ithaca was like on a roll and they were winning a lot of games. And you know, not anything can happen. And Cortland happened to score a touchdown with no time left to win the game. So it could go either way. Ithaca could win the game. We'll see. You saw a big game. Uh, your guys' courage bowl was able was your first win of the season in a crazy game. So, well, best of luck to you guys up this upcoming week and to help finish off this year. All right, thanks. thank you very much. I appreciate it. Keep it here. Up next, we'll be talking to defensive coordinator Mike Fox. There is also a very attractive extended warranty option that includes free service and parts for the next five years. But there's no need for you to get that. You failed to get the test you needed at the doctor that would have detected disease early enough where it could have been treated. So you won't be around in two years to see him grow up, which means the warranty would be useless. OK, sign here, please. For a list of tests every man should have, go to AHRQ.gov. Hi, my name is Mia, and you're watching Cardinal Television. Welcome back to Fish Football Focus, joined now again by defensive coordinator Mike Fox. And uh, we were actually just talking before we came on, Coach, about uh, a lot of different feel from the last time you came here, last time coming off of that loss to Buff State. Now on a four-game winning mm -hmm. streak, consecutive shutouts, um, and, and not only sh two shutouts, but two shutouts against two very different teams from an Alfred State team that, that's new to the, the Division Three level and yeah. then against an Ithaca team that's been very tough in the Empire Rate Conference for years. So um, how does it feel to not only shut out two consecutive teams, but even this past week, you, your defense even scored nine points, out, outscored Ithaca just on defense? It's awesome. I mean, our, our, our kids are playing with a, a sense of confidence right now, which is really nice to see. It's really nice to see them turn it around and, and keep their heads up and kind of keep working and uh, we kind of changed our defense a little bit four weeks ago and just tried to re-emphasize fundamentals and and just getting lined up and playing football and, and and me as a coach just trying not to screw them up but shutting out a team like Ithaca you know I've heard of some stats that they've never been shut out at their home uh, stadium and you know whatever the year it was since the last time they were shut out that that's a great feeling for our kids especially the last two years they were the ones that um have beaten us, you know, for the Empire Eight Championship, and so our kids were fired up for that game, and I, I, I couldn't be happier for them to, to do that on their field. I just talked to Aaron Jones a little bit about this. Um, these past four weeks on this win streak, um, you've held teams to an average of 41 yards a game. Um, even this past week, only hold, holding it, they could only two rushing yards, mm -hmm. and um, obviously starting the stopping the runs. One of the key, you know they, you hear you got to run this up the pass. Well, yep. when you don't let teams run, then it's harder to even even harder to stop the pass. So, yep. are you very proud of the way your team? Does it really show the toughness of your team that you've been able to, to shut down all opposing teams' rushing attacks? Absolutely, and I think the last time I was on here, that was always that's always our first and foremost uh, emphasis every single week is trying to stop the run. Is once you can take away and eliminate one side of the the ball game, then it's easier to tee off on a quarterback or play some different coverages or just you know, getting a good mind frame of, of just having to worry about stopping the pass. So once we, you know, took away the run game, and, you know, I, I can't even take a lot of credit for that. I think the credit has to go for the offense is when you're scoring points and, you know, we gave them some good field position, but they did some, some very good things. They scored a lot of points. They put some field goals and touchdowns on the board. And, and when you get up, you know, two or three scores, it's, it's tough for the offense to run the football. So that's just as much as a credit to the offense as it is to our guys on defense. Then, you know, if you know that the pass is going to be coming, you have to be able to stop it. And obviously yeah. this past week did a great job. Shut down starting quarterback Wolfgang Schaefer only went 3 for 9, 31 yards, mm -hmm. 3 interceptions. Um, he, you guys had 5 interceptions as a whole um, and a safety. Mm -hmm. What play specifically did you see in this past game? What, what were you most happy with your defense on? First play of the game was such a, <laughs> was such a tone setter for the whole game. Uh, Brandon Fuentes. He's one of our best overall football players, and he just made a great individual read and uh, caught the football and, and made such a huge spark for our team. And, and we haven't always started the greatest in games, and this was a great start, and it really sparked our whole team offense, defensively, and that was my favorite play. Uh, and then, of course, Brandon Miller, who uh, I've been coaching him for the last three or four years, and he, we always kind of laugh at him, and he, he's never gotten an interception. He's been such a good player for us, and he – was able to get two, so I think those those two plays for him. Uh, I know as a coach, I was very proud of him, and it was just a an awesome moment for him and our team as well. And you know, you're with these guys just about every day during the season. Yeah. Um, with two games left now, what's the optimism? Um, you know, you guys are are now at a tie for the Empire Eight lead. Mm -hmm. What's the optimism in the locker room right now? 
Uh, what, what's the feeling? You guys, you guys feeling very confident that you guys can be able to pull this out and, and potentially win the Empire Eight? I think we're very confident on our part. Yeah, I, I do. I, I think that our kids are playing very confident right now, and they're very just. They're just really excited to, to play. You know, just just go to practice. They've been having a lot of fun in practice. They've been having a lot of fun in the games, and I think that's the reason for our turnaround. There's nothing that we're doing X's and O wise that's anything special really. It's those guys getting lined up and playing football and really enjoying each other and really enjoying playing the game. And I think they're confident, you know, this is going to be a great test. Because like you said, we've, we've been good against the run. Hartwick, you know, they're known for throwing the ball around. So that's going to be a good challenge for us, you know, and uh, they're excited for the opportunity. And that's all we can do is take care of things on our end and let everything sort itself out. Yeah, I mean, it, it is big to play playing with confidence, um, especially after a one and three start. Did you guys ever think that you'd be able to turn around and not only not only start winning games after that sort of start though but start to kind of dominate games like you have well we we know how tough our conference is and we know it's just a it's a bloodbath every single week for every team so we knew that you know that a lot of a lot of things could happen you know I, I don't know if we ever thought maybe that this exact situation could come up where we could possibly win the conference if some things go our way but we knew at the end of the season you know, there's gonna not, it's going to be tough for a team to, to only lose one game or even two games in our conference because it is so tough. So in, in that aspect, we're not all that surprised, but we just need to focus on, you know, what we need to do for the rest of the season. Yeah, and Har Hartwick, as you mentioned, um, like to pass the ball, but they have almost uh, no rushing attack. They only average just 60 yards a game. Um, John Var Garcia, pretty much their back one of their offense. Yeah. And um, you saw something somewhat similar a few weeks ago when you – playing against Ithaca where they, they really didn't have a lot of success running the ball on you mm -hmm. and they really just kind of relied on Teddy Van Galen a lot so mm -hmm. is there anything you can kind of take away from how you guys played that that Utica game and um, you, know, you, you did give up over 300 yards passing mm -hmm. but kept them out of the end zone do you think you can use some of the same fundamentals that you used in that game to kind of come out and, and prepare for this Hartwick game? Yeah I, I mean in that game we did let up 300 yards passing the first play was a 60 yard 65 yard bomb mm -hmm. so when you start off with 65 yards you don't have a lot of room to wiggle with for the rest of the game. So the big thing for us is just eliminating the big plays. You know, if we can keep everything in front of us and we can come up and tackle things in front of us, make a team drive down the whole field, it's really tough, I think, to do um, on some of our guys. So that's the fundamental and, and techniques that we're going to be working on, just keeping things in front of us, come up and tackle them. Don't give them anything easy. Make them really work for everything that they need to get. And Hartwick, they're going to throw it, they're going to throw it deep, so we're going to be tested on that aspect this week. Yeah, and did – when, when you play against a team that's so strong against the pass and you know you have cornerbacks like Brent Fuentes, like Alec Mortolero, does this make you more confident as a coach to be a little bit more aggressive, know that those guys are always going to be there to not necessarily barely, barely mm -hmm. all, but always do their job? Yeah, it is. And those, those guys really have the most experience on our defense. You know, they've been starting for two and three years. So they do have a lot of experience. It's nice to go into a game where, you know, you're going to see a good passing attack and knowing that it's going to be their good against our good, you know, and, and – I'll take our guys over anyone in the country right now, the way we're playing, and, and that's across all 11 other guys. I'll take them over anyone right now. So I have a lot of confidence what we're doing right now, and I'm just excited to go out and see them play. And then really really quick, think this is going to be a third straight shutout, or you think that streak <laughs> might come to the end this week? It's going to be tough. You know, I, 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 always, I always hope and pray for that. You know what I mean? That's always a goal, but it's going to be tough. These guys have scored a lot of points, and and they can score real quick, so we're going to have to play our best game of the season for that to happen, but we're going to hope so. All right. Well, thank you very much, Coach. Hopefully okay. this shutout streak stays alive, or at the very least the winning streak, right? Absolutely. Thank you so much. So best of luck. That's all the time we have for this edition of Fish for Football Focus. Be sure to tune in next week after the Cardinals take on the Hartwood College Hawks. For Cardinal Television, I'm James Bailey. Catch you next time.